Welcome to the Game of Risk, everyone. I'm your host, Olive XC, a top player at this game. And today, we are competing in the grand finals of the Risk 1v1 World Championship. As you can see in the standings right here, we are currently in second place in the tournament. If we win or tie today, we're guaranteed in the top three. If we lose, we may not even place. We are going up against General Bale, a top Grandmaster and Risk 1v1 player. Four games, Dino World, World Domination. Four games on Simple World Caps. Let's do this. Heading to this first game right here, I am very worried going first. As the Blizzards are in very non-impactful areas of the board, this leaves the map very open, which makes it hard for me as player one to hold a continent. Additionally, these portals are very spread out, blocking me from holding a lot of the continents, because Bale can always go through a portal in order to hit me. As I'm trying to place down more territories, trying to get an advantage for myself, uh, I realize that I can't even hold the upper right as Bale is placing in very good locations. He's taking a lot of time with every move. In turn, I'm trying to place more in the center, but this is creating problems where he's in multiple spots to hide his army, like in the middle of the board, in the bottom right, and I honestly just can't predict him. So as we place down our final territories, I decide to place everything in the upper right hand side, and this is because Bale won't be able to reach me. So on my turn, I decide to take over the upper left continent to force Bale to place troops there, and take a few additional territories to reduce his initial count, and staying next to a portal, getting ready to hit Bale the next turn. But Bale makes a brilliant move right here. He first prioritizes breaking the continent up above there, but he's unable to take it, which is huge for my game. He then decides to take the middle continent, holding it with a three-point guard. I never saw this coming, and this was just such a good move. He then takes over one additional territory to get my troop count down the next turn. I have to roll him down, which is a 50% roll, but I get very, very lucky being able to break Bale. I then prioritize taking over additional territories to lower his count, and then I, after making a couple of attacks, I move my army next to him in order to blitz him the next turn. On Bale's turn, he has to break my continent, so he attacks in a line, taking as many territories as he can for himself, and he successfully breaks everything. He is doing a really good job making the best moves possible. But I still have a huge army to attack with, so he tries to roll me down, but he does not get good rolls. So on my move, I attack in a line again, breaking all of Bale's continents and, and taking as much territory as I can for myself, getting a favorable blitz on his remaining army. I now have 25 territories, and we can see that Bale is only getting four troops per turn. This is not enough to break the balance of the game. And with me turning in a set and holding a continent, I now have an overwhelming number of troops and Bale cannot do anything to stop me at this time. I quickly am going to be able to clean up and be ahead one to zero, heading into game number two. Going into the second game, I really like these blizzards a lot more because of the one that we see in the upper right hand corner. This makes the territories on the right hand side potentially a two border hold and that's going to be very hard for Bale to stop. So I'm prioritizing placing more troops on the left hand side because those portals make it very challenging for Bale to stop. I also noticed that the upper left hand corner can potentially be a two point hold as the portals also are not there. So Bale has two problems that he has to stop. So I make sure to place my territories away from the upper right hand side to force Bale to have like a lot of problems that he needs to solve. I also group my troops in the bottom right hand side to force Bale to group himself in other areas of the board. And as I make my final selections right here, Bale is just unable to really get anything going. So I place my troops down in the middle and he does a two stack, one in the bottom left and then the rest in the middle. So I take over my continents and then I get a good favorable blitz hitting him. And then I remove my remaining troops back uh, towards my content to be able to hit more areas of the board as needed. Bale also has to break me, so he's going to open up my army. On Bale's turn, he decides to take over a large number of territories, but fails a 3v1. But then with his army, he does a slider blitz mistake, losing three troops for himself. And I'm really pumped up, as you can see. I then prioritize placing all my troops down 
attacking and breaking all of Bale's continents as early as possible. And then I go through the portal, hitting Bale, and now I have an overwhelming troop lead at this time, and Bale is unable to stop me. I'm going to be able to quickly clean up and win this game right here, and now I am leading 2-0 over Bale. Heading into game number 3, Bale has to go first for the next two games, and I am not liking these blizzards at all. In particular, the blizzard in the middle right here kind of splits the board down in two. Also, as there are no impactful portals on the right hand side, this is going to make Bale have a lot of options for himself to be able to hold the continents and I just won't be able to stop it. He also does a really good job taking a lot of territories in the left hand side. And now Bale does a brilliant move. He starts taking territories in the upper middle continent and I give him the continent right here, you guys, which is insane. And I realized I had to give it to him because I would just be splitting the map in two. I, I had no choice. But by actually giving him the continent, if I'm able to hide my army, I can get a huge advantage for myself. So I decide to place all of my troops kind of down in the middle because I still have access to a portal. But he's able to guess me, and with the extra troops, he's able to get a very favorable roll hitting me. He takes additional territories for himself, and now he has a huge troop lead right now. But thankfully, he does fail the 2v1 on the upper left-hand side. Now, with my 7 troops, I have to get some very favorable rolls, or I am going to lose the game. I make some attacks, and now I have to win a lot of rolls, and I have to get very, very lucky. So I have to do a 2v1, it goes well. Now I have to do a 3v2. Do I win? Yes, I do. So I do break everything. But Bale is still getting 6 per turn. Again, his first roll was just very good. Even though I got lucky, Bale is just taking over everything on the board right now. And there's just like a nothing that I can do for myself. I try to get lucky right heel, rolling down Bale. But I fail, so Bale is going to take this game. And now the score is 2-1. to one. We are now heading into the fourth game. And again, Bale has to go first. And we can see there's impactful blizzards on the left-hand side that makes that continent a two-point hold. There is one portal there. So I might be able to do something. So again, I'm just focusing on placing my territories down. But Bale, in his first couple of turns, places a nice two territories down in this little pocket right here. And that just makes it really hard for me to get an advantage for myself. I try to counter by placing territories down in the uh, lower right hand side. But Bale throughout this entire time right here is just does an amazing job picking territories. And now I'm kind of just forced to make some sacrifices. Do I give up the right hand side or do I give up the left hand side? And I choose to have to give up the left hand side right here. I, I just have nothing I can do. I, I take that territory. Bale has just made no mistakes. He's very, very careful and plays very good standard risk. So I realize now that everything's blocked off that I decide to place everything there to force a stack blitz and Bale does a stack blitz and he loses 24. Guys, look how pumped I am right now. He got so unlucky right there and I got so lucky. I can't believe that happened. So I prioritize taking as many troops as possible for the remainder of the turn in order to generate an advantage. Thanks to good luck, Bale will get less troops than me. I then move, try to move my two to a better location, but I misplace it a little bit. But Bale is only getting four per turn. So he tries attacking right here. He breaks all of my continents. But guys, even though I had a bad, he had a bad roll, he can still win if he gets a set on three. The player one advantage is really strong on this map. On my turn, I prioritize taking as many territories as I can to force Bale to only be getting four troops per turn on the next cycle. On Bale's turn, he places his troops down to attack again. And now he fails a 3v1. I'm at 21 territories. And he also fails a 2v1 roll. So now I'm getting seven troops per turn. I again I prioritize attacking around the map in order to be lowering Bale's troop count. And now Bale is only going to be getting three troops per turn. The game has broken in my favor. Luck has gone my way. Bale just can't do anything. He makes a valiant effort attacking, fails. 
I will be able to clean up quickly around the map and I am going to be winning this game and the score is now 4 to 1 in my favor. Heading into the first game on Simple World Capitals, these are I think very even blizzards between player 1 and player 2. I had the opportunity to potentially hold the mainland uh, Europe region, but Bill has a good opportunity to potentially hold South America for himself. As we place down our territories, I actually do have to take Australia, which gives me plus one troops, but gives Bale a very good opportunity to hide for himself in South America. Since I am aware of this, I decide to take over mainland Europe and try to break that region, but Bale decides to cap in South America, and I decide to then cap in Russia. The benefit of my initial decision is that I'm going to be able to hold mainland Europe this turn and be in a really good spot. However, Bale makes a brilliant move here. He first takes and holds South America, leaving barely any troops on his capital, and then he puts everything in China. I now have to hit him with a 65% chance and I fail. Now Bale is going to be getting a tremendous number of troops and gaining an advantage over me. I am in a tough spot right now, you guys. But on my turn, I did hit the five. I get really lucky losing only one on the five. And I proceed to take over a large number of territories on the map. My cap is really low, but Bale is very conservative. He won't hit it if he feels he can survive in the long game. So I'm taking advantage of some of his tendencies right here that I know from practice with him in the past. On his turn, he takes over a bunch of continents, but I hold mainland Europe. He didn't break that. So I break his South America and pour everything back. He can't hit me because the odds are very, very low. He wants to play the long game. So he breaks my Europe region and then puts everything back to his capital. I then prioritize trading in, taking over Africa to again force him to split. I expect him to have a set. So I just prioritize again, taking over mainland Europe for myself. I have a two there and I move my troops back to my capital just enough for safety. Bale does have a set here. And he tries to do a 5v1 and he fails. Guys, that was so, so critical that that happened. So Bale decides to take over some additional continents for himself. I am now prioritizing breaking all of these continents. And again, I'm not opening up his cap, so I'm keeping my cap a little bit weaker. I have only a 5 on my cap, but I know he won't hit me. He's very, very conservative, so he decides to just break the Europe region, giving me Australia and one extra troop, which is critical. I now trade in my set because I got a wild card. Wilds are very, very common on this map. I break his South America, and I have just enough on my cap for safety right now, around 13. Bale trades in again, and I try to be a little tricky leaving three troops in Europe so he maybe doesn't defend correctly, but he does break me, and he takes over his continent. He is very, very low on troops right now, though. He does fail taking over Africa, so I only have to break a couple of regions for myself in the next turn. I prioritize breaking South America again, and guys, I noticed that my on my turn I had a wild card. I'm guaranteed to be having a set on three, so I'm just trying to stay, stay alive as long as I can to be able to trade in. Bale is getting some really nice dice right here to make up some for some bad dice in the past, but again, I just have to survive for one more turn. I break Bale again, and I break his North America, and I go back. I know he's not going to hit me. He hasn't been doing it all game. And look, I have the set. Bale is breaking me, but he can't put any more troops on his capital. I do the calculation and see the 20v9 is around 85%. This is worth it for me. So I go for the Blitz, and I get it, and I go ahead 5-1. to one. What an incredible game. Heading into game number 6. I, it looks like I'm in a horrible spot right now. China splits the board in two, where Bale can either hold mainland Europe forever, or he can hold the rest of the board forever. So it looks like I'm just going to lose because he holds that spot. But then I get a brilliant idea for myself. I know that I can't prevent Bale from capping in China and holding everything, but I can prevent him from winning. What do I mean by this? Well, first, there's a rule in our 1v1 tournaments, guys. If neither player can attack for three turns, it's a draw, and both sides get one point. I want more points, so I'm fine with this. So I purposely leave my troops in a line at the bottom, 
because I want Bale to take them over, I place all of my troops in the Russia region. Bale then proceeds to take over the remaining territories for himself, and since he owns Australia, South America, Africa, and 12 territories, he's getting 11 per turn. But guys, I'm getting 8 per turn. And I'd be thinking, guy, Bale's getting more. Shouldn't he be winning right here? No! I have done capital conquest calculations in my spare time because I am a super nerd. And I know that you need to have 1.7 to 1.8 times the number of troops of your opponent in order to get a successful blitz. He is only getting 1.4 times the number of troops as me. This is not enough for him to be getting an advantage. The other question you may be asking is, Olive, you could be doing things like giving your girlfriend attention, going on a vacation, literally anything else. Why are you calculating the odds of capital conquests? And my answer to this is, I'm a super nerd and I go all out for my fans. And if this doesn't compel you to like and subscribe this video, I don't know what will. But I get a draw out of this game, and now the score is 6-2. to two. Heading into game number 7, and guys, no, this is not a video editing mistake right here. We literally get the same blizzards again for ourselves. So what Bale is trying to do this time is he's trying to avoid a draw because he knows that I understand Capital Conquest odds. So what he's trying to do is cap in Russia, prevent me from holding the bottom half of the map by splitting a lot, and then hold mainland Europe. But I have another tricky play that I learned through practice with one of my partners, Frail Waif. What you can do is if you're given a one border continent, you literally cap on the continent, and Bale didn't see this coming. By capping on the continent and getting an isolated territory for myself down in Australia, Bale is going to be unable to break me. I'll be getting a permanent plus eight holding that continent and getting a huge advantage for myself. I am also holding North America with a very strong guard. I then prioritize attacking the 13, getting plus six, so a very good favorable advantage, and then I break Asia. I now have a huge advantage over Bale, who's only getting 5 per turn. He now tries to break my North America, but he has to get very lucky and... No way, he's actually going to be able to break that? Oh my gosh, you guys, that was some incredible luck by Bale, winning that 6v10. But he needs some crazy luck to come back here. Like He gets a good roll, but not an amazing one. So he's continuing to make attacks, but his capital is really weak right now, and I'm still getting 8 per turn. So using my additional troops, I prioritize breaking everything around the map for myself, and Bale, again, is in a tough spot. He decides to try to break my North America, but fails a 5e2. This is nearly insurmountable for Bale to recover from. I debate if I should be blitzing Bale right now, but I know that I'll get 100% roll if I wait for one more turn. So I just prioritize taking over additional continents to force Bale to keep his capital weak for himself. He has no set on three, he breaks the remaining regions, but he only has seven on his capital. I turn in my set, I go for the blitz, and it's 100% roll, and I take the win, and I'm now ahead 8-2. to two. Heading into the last game, these blizzards are very favorable for player two. They can either hold South America with one border or mainland Europe. I make a mistake early on taking the United States as my third territory rather than mainland Europe. This is going to allow Bale to go for the mainland Europe play instead of really lacking a good continent spot for himself. I also connect myself all in the bottom of the map. So Bale just outplayed me in territory selection right here. I just made a lot of mistakes. So I try to predict him where he's hiding his stack, but Again, you can just place everywhere in mainland Europe. I didn't even see that. I, I just made a big mistake. And I continue making mistakes right here. I decide to fortify my 20 troops back to my capital. Well, I should be doing my 11. Because now Bale, on his turn, will be able to attack that 11 to get the his attacker's advantage. So he goes in for the attack. And when he goes for it, he goes plus 4. And I'm just in a horrible, horrible spot. I'm still getting plus 7, I can break his mainland Europe, but long term, he's going to be okay right here. I decided to split some troops, but I probably should have done a little bit more. 
because now look, Bale is a 6v4, he's successful, so he fortifies Alpha's troops, and now he's going to be able to take and hold the European continent. So I decide to try to take some additional continents for myself and fortify and bail though. He's just going to be able to put more troops on his cap. He's going to be able to break everything once again. And uh, he's just getting more troops than me. He's going to be able to outproduce me in the long term and get an advantage. So I try to place some additional troops down. And he decides to get the attacker's advantage hitting it right there. And he goes plus four on the blitz. I don't even turn to set here because I'm just trying to maybe hopefully like last one more turn to save my wild or something for a double trade in. I'm just getting desperate, but I leave my capital way too weak. Bale is able to trade in and take the game. The final score is eight to four. So who wins the tournament? I'll let the real me take over. Wait, so I wait, I'm turning champ. What's going on? Frail won six to three. Where's the scores? Oh my gosh. I, I won. I won. No way. I'm pulling up the event announcement, so I have to see this live. Here's the standings. Let's go! We won the tournament, everybody! We're the 1v1 champions of the world! I get first place, Frail Wave gets second place, Under the Gun gets third, and General Bale gets fourth! Thank you all so much for watching, everybody. This run was done live on Twitch, so make sure to follow me as I will be streaming more often. And if you want to see my journey to being a champion in this tournament, click on this playlist right here for more information. I gave my victory speech in the Discord uh, right here. Be sure to join that uh, as well. But with that, this is Olive XC signing off.